Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Zach Giglio about understanding your organizational identity and its impacts on your people. Zach Giglio, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thanks, John. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to have a nice conversation with you today. We're going to be focusing on understanding your organizational identity and its impact on your people. Uh, And part of that is, you know, understanding the difference between organizational identity and organizational purpose. We talk a lot about uh, mission, vision, values, purpose, all of these types of terms. All of that's part of what uh, I suppose we're, we're talking about in part around organizational identity, but we're going to unpack that more and and try to have a better understanding of what that means and how we can leverage organizational identity uh, to just have really great, dynamic, high-performing organizations. As we get started, I wanted to share Zach's bio with everybody. Zach Giglio is a communications expert with more than a decade of experience in public relations, public affairs, marketing, and both digital and social media. He has worked for the largest public relations agency in the world in Washington, D.C. and Johannesburg, and as an independent contractor, and now runs his own boutique communications firm. His clients have ranged from executives and Fortune 500 companies to startups and community businesses. He has launched and run an award-winning corporate news site, crafts and executes comprehensive communication strategies, including crisis communication plans, and specializes in customized trainings, to help organizations hone in on their identities and set the foundation for a strong communications and marketing strategy. And I could go on and on, Zach, you've done so many wonderful things, uh, but I want to give you a chance to share with listeners anything else you would like them to know by way of your background or personal context. Yeah. And I appreciate that. And uh, I'll shorten that in the future, make a little bit, make a little bit easier to to, to, to get through, but no, I I mean, I think that, 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 that sums it up. I think the only other thing that, that I would add, I think it relates to, to me and also our work at GCM is just, you know, I've had the fortune uh, of being able to travel and live and work around the world and have seen the power that human connection has on, on, on our lives and the work that we actually do. And so that is a really uh, foundational element when we talk about who is your business and organizational identity and all the work we do, that is really at the core of, of, of who we are. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. And I also, have always had the travel bug, lived in a lot of different places around the world. I've been a little bummed out because of COVID and uh, yeah. a lot of travel plans have been canceled over the last 18 to 20 months. Um, but I'm looking forward to the coming year and hopefully uh, things open up a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I think that's wonderful. And and maybe as we get started, you can unpack for us a little bit what you mean when you say organizational identity and really how you perceive that to be different from purpose of an organization yeah so 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 purpose is important like you know let's just start off there purpose is important but we really believe that purpose should be built on top of your organizational identity or your identity as a leader Um, your identity is basically who you are so that could be your set of values your beliefs um, your principles uh, your identity your purpose is part of what you do uh, your purpose is 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 really probably more like your identity, but as it manifests itself in 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 your actions. Um, and I think that the, that distinction is actually important because everybody knows we need to be a purpose driven organization these days. People are looking, you know, whether it's consumers, partners, regulators, for what's your purpose. But I think the danger that organizations can get into is if they seek purpose for the sake of it, and then they find themselves maybe just jumping around or waffling or being unsure of it as opposed to the organizations who get it right, that we believe are the ones who understand their identity, who they are, and that purpose is built on top of it. So when things go wrong or when things go right, 
they have a lot more confidence in, in their purpose and how they execute on that. And they're less swayed by maybe some external forces that could be loud and maybe sometimes should cause you to, re- to pivot, but maybe sometimes they shouldn't. But you know that when you understand what your identity is in the beginning. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate that. And it, it's just so easy in a hyper-competitive global marketplace. You're trying to stay relevant. You're, you're trying to attract and retain good employees. You're trying to attract and retain customers and, and have customer loyalty. And that's so challenging. And it's so tempting to just try to be all things to all people all the time and just chase every last opportunity that seems to come before you. Why is that not a good idea? I mean, on the one hand, I'm like, okay, I have this opportunity to go do this other thing. I've never really done it before, um, but we can make a lot of money from it. It, it might be, it might potentially become a new branch of the business. Uh, why do we need to be disciplined and why could that potentially be a bad idea? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, uh, and I think it's a trap that a lot of organizations fall into is, is exactly what you said. They try to, they see this shiny opportunity in front of them. They want to jump at it. It looks good on their, on their books, right? Like it adds to your revenue and, or, or, but where our belief is we're in the long game. So we want things to work. Yes. This year, we want revenue to grow. We want to seize opportunities. We want to help our clients grow, you know, grow their aware, presence, you know, particularly with key stakeholders. But over the long term, if you're too many things to too many people, then you're not anything significant to any one person. So if, if, you're, not, if you're not focusing on the relationships or the opportunities that align more succinctly with who your organization is, then you're not going to have any sort of meaningful interaction, whether that's externally or internally. So if you... So if I, the way I think about it is, or the way we think about it is, we know that 90% of all the decisions that we make are based on emotion. I think it's 100%, but let's just say there's, 10, there's 10% of our emotions that we're actually using logic. But really what we do is we use logic after we already make that decision to justify that decision to ourselves and to other people. So when we say, when, so if we know that, then we know that people who work for us are, are making that decision based on emotion. People who partner with us buy, from our, buy our services, they, the deeper that they can connect to us on an emotional level, the better relationships we'll have and the more beneficial relationships we'll have with our people, with our partners, with our customers over the long term, the more trust we'll be able to build. And that's important for maximizing your current opportunity. It's also important to survive crises or when you make a mistake, which you will. To have to be able to leverage that trust with the people that are most important to your organization internally and externally. And so if you're spending too much time and resources trying to be too many things to too many people or too many organizations, then you don't have that core component of your identity for people to really sink their emotions into, to really relate to, to understand and to trust, because it's hard to pinpoint who you actually are. Yeah, yeah, I think that's well said. And, you know, we talk a lot about authenticity for example, in the workplace, as individuals, as leaders. I think that also goes for organizations, right? Or teams. We need to, you know, authentically portray ourselves to the public, to our customer base, uh, you know, for who we truly are. And and people can see through the PR spin. They can see through, you know, the lipstick and the, the, the lip service that we might give to particular hot button issues or topics or, you know, we have a nice mission statement, vision statement, whatever. Um, people can see through it if we're not, if it's not actually meaningful to us, if it's not part of who we are. And so that's part of what I see is this differentiation between organizational identity and maybe some of those other elements is your identity is like really, truly who you are as an organization, what you're trying to accomplish and how you be with and act with and, and interface with other key stakeholders um, connected with the business, whether it's suppliers, whether it's customers, employees, whatever, um, right? That, that we need consistency uh, according to our core values and beliefs um, that we're going to focus in on being true to ourselves as an organization. And there's, there's really great examples of this out in the corporate world. Um, but I would say for every good example, there's probably, you know, a dozen or more not great examples of, of people really chasing the shiny object. And to your point about short-term versus long-term kind of mentality, I, I get it. If you're, if you're, if you're struggling and you're not sure how you're going to make payroll and you're just like, how can we keep the doors open and you have an opportunity 
you know, to chase this revenue stream. I get it. I understand um, the reality of that kind of a situation, but if, if we can, if we have the option and, and we're not forced into a corner, we need to, to sometimes sacrifice short-term gains for long-term sustainability and for that authenticity and, and being true to our identity, because that's, what's going to, you know, our reputation as an organization, um, that's, that's, what's going to, to align us with great partners and great, um, stakeholders, great customers for the long haul. And ultimately that's what any organization really wants. Yeah, I, I think that's a hundred percent right. Uh, I think everything you said for me, you know, lines up exactly with how we think about organizational identity and, you know, I've never had a problem by being too strategic about how we like grow businesses, right? Like, so if, if, if you're just going out at any shiny object, like, again, I'm not mad at that, but that's not a strategy, right? That's reaction. You're, you're reacting to opportunities, which is okay. Like, you know, you need to seize opportunities that are right. But being able, if you understand what your organizational identity is, you can take a step back and be like, does this help us grow and solidify who we are as an organization and accomplish the things that are important to us? If it does, like, let's double down on this. If not, then we probably shouldn't be chasing this because, again, over the long term, we can't multiply that in a meaningful way. And Because really what you want to do is be like as specialized or have as many meaningful relationships and then like multiply that, right? Like you want to say, what's my most meaningful? Like if you, So if you're an organization, you think about it this way, like who is like, what's my most meaningful relationship with a client? How can I make that relationship times 10 and then times 100? Not how do I just get more clients? Right. Because like you want to have these meaningful, positive, beneficial relationships. And again, it's the more you understand who you are, the better you're able to have clarity on who that on who that good client is like. And a good client, you know, yeah, payment, you know, how much they pay you matters. But also how much do they align? How much do you feel good when you answer the phone when they call you? Like that's all with your, you know, with with, with who you are. And, and, you know, I know our best clients, oftentimes they call us and ask us if we can do something for them that they're not hundred percent sure that we can ever do. Like, like they don't know if we've done it or not. I mean, how crazy is that? Right? Like we're not a, we're not an organization that sells services. It's not like they looked at like a menu of, Oh, well, GCM does this, 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 and that. Well, we need this one. And I don't see it on their menu. So we got to call someone else. They just trust us to be able to get stuff done. And they trust that if we can't do it, we'll say no. But that if we can, that we'll get a good job done because it's not about who we, I mean, we tell clients and, you know, when we're in pitches all the time, our business, if we were a landscaping company, we'd be the same business. Like there would be almost nothing different except the product would be, you have a really nice looking lawn, but like, we just happen to like comms and marketing. And, and that mindset has worked for us. And to your point, we didn't like independently, you know, we didn't like just invent this. We just independently arrived at it, looked around and were like, oh my gosh, this is what all the biggest, best organizations are doing. It's why Apple started as a hardware company is now making TV shows and nobody questions it. It's why Amazon is sending rockets into space and no one's like, what is a online book selling company to teachers doing, which is how they started sending rockets into space. How could Elon Musk and PayPal be changing the way the roads look, right? Like, no one questions that because all of these organizations and people never sold products or services. They've developed trust with the, not everybody likes all these people and organizations. There's a lot of people who hate Amazon, a lot of people who don't like Apple. Um, but Apple knows who they are and that's what they sell and that's what they form their relationships on. And that's why people want to work with them. And when Apple makes a mistake, which they have done, you know, with that whole thing about pictures getting uploaded to the cloud recently, all of the people that they've developed relationships with that matter, whether it's internally with their employees, which is now probably more important than even customers like me, or externally with customers, they may not have liked it, but they were willing to listen and forgive them because they had developed a, a really strong foundation for these relationships that they created because they never said, we're a phone company that produces the best privacy. They said, we're an organization that believes in innovation and thinking different and helping people and, 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 and simplifying your life. And we may have gotten this one wrong. I'm excited to announce the publication of my new book from HCI Press, Bluer Than Indigo Leadership. 
the journey of becoming a truly remarkable leader. Early in my adult life, I learned about an Asian proverb that translates as bluer than indigo. If you think about the color indigo, it is a brilliant, deep, and vibrant blue. What some would call the bluest of blues. To have something that is bluer than indigo is rare and truly remarkable. Contrary to popular myth, there is no one-size-fits-all or cookie-cutter approach to effective leadership. There's no silver bullet, no secret sauce, no go-to model that will solve all of our problems. The truth is, great leaders have all had their unique strengths and flaws, and have all had to discover and then pave their own distinctive path in their life's journey to fulfill their leadership potential. Bluer Than Indigo Leadership will help you discover your own path and explore those ordinary, everyday actions that will help you respond to an uncertain future and produce extraordinary results for individuals, teams, and organizations. Yeah, that's a great example. And um, when you have that kind of brand loyalty and customer loyalty, you can weather those types of of storms, those gaffes, uh, those those missteps. And I think that speaks to really, I, I know something else that you and your team focus on a lot. Uh, and that is, you know, staying true to your organization identity um, so that when the time comes that you're facing a crisis, that you're facing you know, major market challenges, uh, that you have the trust built up, the relationship built up over time that you can weather that storm. Can you speak to that a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. And, and one of the, one of the best examples I could think of is Airbnb. So Airbnb, when COVID hit, right? Like Airbnb, I think we used to understand, think like, oh, well, they sell people's other people's houses, but they actually don't own They're the largest hospitality company in the world. They don't own a piece of property, right? They never actually sold us rooms. What they always sold us was experiences and making you feel a part of, of, of a community or making you feel like this big executive boss. Like it was never about the house. And when COVID hit and People were canceling bookings and their revenue was going down. They had to, they had to like lay a lot of people off and, and everything, you know, they should have, if they were a product service oriented company, they should have failed. Like they should have gone bankrupt, but they weren't. They got back and they said, well, what is our identity? What is our core and how do we pivot? And so they started offering like backyard experience, you know, renting the house down the road. They started doing online experiences. Why would a, I mean, think about it. Like, what if like the Marriott all of a sudden was like, oh, you know, you can't come to a hotel, but we'll do an online cooking class. You'd be like, that, 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 why would I trust the Marriott to do an online cooking class? But we all trusted Airbnb to do that because Airbnb was always about the experience. They sold themselves as, as they believe in these positive, happy, exciting, enjoyable, like end to end experiences, seamless experiences. And they survived and now their revenue jumped back up and they're, and they're doing great. I mean, that, like these, the best companies are doing this. Like it's, I think this isn't, they never sold, they never sold um, that stuff. And so when these crises hit you, what your, your pivot is your product and service, but your pivot isn't your identity. Your identity is actually the constant that no one's losing faith in. But yeah. if you if you've developed your company or your organization on your product or your service like alone, and all of a sudden that product or service is literally not able to be offered anymore, you were in a lot of trouble. And that's why we saw some restaurants could pivot and some couldn't. Right? Some wine stores in my I'm thinking about you know where I'm living in, in Charleston, South Carolina, had a hard time. Some sold virtual great experiences like. There was some, or like if you see, like, what was the difference between when COVID hit? Up, like, what, or and now there's other factors too, of course. But like, what was like this one difference? It's which organizations could pivot their products and services in a seamless way that didn't make people freak out or like say like this is unusual, and which ones did it in a seamless way. The last example I'll I'll, I'll give you here is since Twitter basically started, they always put, like publish like what is the one top three reasons people will unfollow you, right? And it's not that you say these horrible offensive statements or you post that it's that you post something that is not in line with your followers expectation. 
So when you disrupt your the expectations of the people that you have somewhat of a relationship with, they do not like that. And so again, if you're found if your foundation is your identity, that does not need to be disrupted in a in a in a crisis, or if you want to offer a new a new service. But if it's if it's what we've always been told, you know, what's about what you do, it's about your product or your service first and foremost. Uh, you're going to have a really hard time pivoting or or responding to a crisis. Yeah, yeah, I love that distinction. The identity being the constant, the product or service is what can pivot. Your offerings are what can pivot. But if you're not true to who you are as an organization, just like we would talk about being true to who you are as an individual, as a leader, it's going to cause problems. And one of the other pieces I, you know, I thought we could explore together um, in our remaining time is really specifically what this means for the people within the organization. You know, we, there's been a lot of talk about the great resignation and, and organization it's a tight labor market. Organizations are struggling to attract and retain good people, especially in technology, STEM types of, of fields. So the higher the level of expertise needed for the role, the harder it is to attract and retain that person. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. I don't want to oversimplify, but I am a believer that that kind of core identity and the alignment of individuals with that core organizational identity really matters. Uh, and you, you can deal with a lot of the other stuff if that alignment and that congruency exists. And if it's not there, there's not an anchor to keep that person with the organization. Um, maybe you could speak to that or if there's other elements to you know, how that the organization's identity plays into how you interact with the people within the organization that you want to highlight. Yeah. So I mean, like you said, there, there are lots of factors, but if we look at it through this lens of organizational identity being the core of everything, including your culture, how you hire and let people go, you know, I mean, how many times do you hear like, Oh, this just didn't work out. Uh, Someone has only been, you know, you hired somebody and they've been there for three months. Well, why is that? Obviously there was some, There was some misalignment in the expectation. And if you understood the organization's identity on both sides a little bit clearer, there probably wouldn't be this big surprise once they got in. And I think we know now that most people, I mean, don't get me wrong, money's important. I want all of it. But we know that people work for organizations that they believe in and that they value actually other other things higher than money. Uh, Culture is very important to them. Their leaders are very important to them. Um, and I think it's still true in these like high skilled, high value jobs. It's just most of these high skill, high value jobs have always been predicated on like, we'll pay you the most and give you the best package. And so that is like not a sustainable battle to ever win. Like you will 100% have turnover there because the more desperate company or the more company that has like the biggest opportunity is always going to at some point be able to up your, you know, your, your offering if it's only on salary. And, but if people feel connected to their organization, if they feel like they're a part of it, like that their identity aligns in all the important ways with the organizational identity, then people won't leave. Now we have, you know, we want a boutique agency, but we haven't lost a single person and we have great benefits and stuff like that, but that's not the reason why. And a lot of the organizations that we work with, the ones with the strongest identity, people understand who they are and why they're there are not experiencing as large of a shift in their workforce as, as, as other ones. And you could look at it and you could look at it anywhere. So if, again, it's like the same thing as like, if you base your external profile on your products and services, when that is now disrupted or needs to change, or someone can offer a better product or services, which like, you know, I'm not saying that we offer the best like press releases or social media copy. Like we don't. That's not, that's not what our business is, but someone will always come by and do something better. Same thing as like, if you look internally, if, 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 if it's just based on all these like material, like action oriented things, this is what will pay you. This is how many days you get off. Someone gives you, you know, a thousand dollars more and gives you one more day off. That's a better place for you to be. But if you say, no, no, we're either a family based or organization or we're not, we're a cutthroat, like the hardest people are the ones who, you know, like if, if you say like, you're like a, this investment bank and we're all about getting like the top talent the people who want to work like 80 hour weeks and then all of a sudden you walk into a meeting and they're like we're really concerned that people are working too much and we want to start offering you'll be like what the heck is going on that's not what i signed up for right like so it goes it's no judgment here it's like there's no like there's some north star about like who's right just 
understand who you are and be that in every part of your organization. And people will be will give you again those breaks uh, if, if, if they trust you. And then if they get a better offer, they'll say, hey, like, I really want to stay with you, but I got this better offer. Can you do anything about it? As opposed to just being like, they're not going to do anything. This is a better offer and leaving. So, um, yeah, we believe really strong in your organizational identity having a big, a big uh, impact on how you hire, retain, and keep a sustainable business and and and, and employees and, and team members. Yeah, yeah, and I completely agree because ultimately we want consistency as much as possible. There, I mean, I suppose consistency and uncertainty is a bit of a facade. Um, you know, things are always changing around us and we can't expect everything to just stay exactly the same. But, you know, if I'm making a big life decision and I'm joining a, a corporation because of X, Y, Z, they have this type of culture, this identity, these are the products and services they do. This is how they tend to treat their employees, so on and so forth. I've done my homework. I understand that I align with the organization, who they are, what they're trying to accomplish. And then I get there and it's like, I feel like it's a bait and switch. And now it's it's something totally different. Of course, I'm not going to want to stay there. Uh, even if it's still a pretty good place to be, if it's not consistent with my expectations, you know, then I'm going to probably leave. And so a lot of this is just expectations management, right? And and just consistency as much as possible, being open in your communications with your people so they can understand if you need to make adjustments that could be perceived as, you know, contrary to your core identity and values as an organization, you need to have that open dialogue and the conversation so that people aren't blindsided by it, by it so that people can recognize why it's happening. Um, and if you can do that, you can weather those adjustments over time. Um, but if, if you uh, try to like pull the rug out from under people um, and, and rip the bandaid off, so to speak, it's going to cause a lot of problems and you're going to have uh, defections. People are going to leave and then you're going to be struggling to, to fill key roles and to, to continue to provide great value to the marketplace, which ultimately is what we're, we're striving for. Well, Zach, it has just been a real pleasure talking with you. I know at the time I need to let you go here in just a minute. Um, but before we close today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about your work, your team, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Yeah, I appreciate it. I've had a great time, John. Thanks so much for the conversation. Um, so yeah, our, our website, again, identity is important to us. So it's whoisgcm.com. So we want to make sure that we're asking ourselves that question. So we think about that and everything we do. So we put it in our website. Uh, and I'm also on LinkedIn. I'm pretty good about responding to LinkedIn messages and, and, and connections. It's Zach Giglio. Um, and yeah, I think, I think uh, it's been a really good conversation. I think we covered a lot. Um, I think if you're if you're thinking, well, how do I get started? How do I find out what my identity is as a leader? How do I find out what my organization's identity is? I think the first thing to do is to do a bit of an audit. If you're an organization or if you are a part of an organization, send like a text message to 10 people and ask them the questions, who is our business or who is our organization? And what do we do? And answer them in two sentences or less each question and see the responses you get back. Are they aligned? Are they exactly the same? If they're the same, then you probably have a pretty good understanding. If not, uh, you might need to do something further from that. And if you're a leader, you're just an individual, I would send a uh, text message to maybe five people in your network, two people that are close to you, two people that maybe you work with who aren't that close, and one person who like you think will answer, but you're not sure. And see what they say. What kind of leader am I am? Like, who am I as a leader? And what do I do? And see what the responses are. I think it's a great way to get started. Sometimes the first you know, way is just do like a bit of an audit and, and, and level set. Those are great tips. Zach, it has been a pleasure uh, I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Zach and his team can do for you. This has just been a fun conversation. I hope everyone will stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership. Ordinary, everyday actions that produce extraordinary results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years. With increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition, the average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? 
Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. Check out Human Capital Innovations magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free, interactive e-magazine with the mission to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We publish issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Take a look at the latest issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week. Check out our new weekly LinkedIn newsletter, Alchemizing Human Capital, exploring industry trends via original research and interviews with executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We look forward to having you join us. Make this Christmas memorable with Goat Guns. Get the coolest miniature gun models for your collection. From historical classics to modern weapons, we have something for every firearm and hobby enthusiast. Surprise your loved ones with the gift of Goat Guns, the perfect blend of quality and detail. Shop now and spread the joy at GoatGuns.com.